It goes without saying that less components is better, right? Unless you're one of those engineers, and then, well, yes, pack as many components into your system as humanly possible. But for the rest of us, though, streamlining our designs is paramount. Not only does it reduce our bomb, it also helps us reduce board space and can also help with EMI performance and efficiency as well. And one area where streamlining our component count is a big deal is in the world of position control. And how are we going to do that? Advanced stepper motor drivers from ST Microelectronics. That's how. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Yuri Kaperda from ST Microelectronics and I explore the benefits of the Power Step 1 system and package from ST Microelectronics. We also examine how this solution can streamline overall position control architecture the high-level commands included in this solution, and the variety of advanced diagnostics included in the Power Step 1 system and package. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from ST Microelectronics. Hi, Yuri. Thank you so much for joining me. Good afternoon. Okay, so we're talking about simplifying position control architecture with advanced stepper motor drivers today. But Yeti, before we talk in depth about this topic, can you set the stage for us? When it comes to systems and package, what are the biggest difficulties you're seeing? There are three major challenges, efficiency, integration of advanced functions, and control architecture for multimotor solutions. Okay, so... Since we're talking about position control, what are the biggest challenges in this arena that you're seeing these days? I would say system complexity, efficiency and EMI compliance, and the third one would be accuracy and speed profile. So if we go back to the system complexity, I think today's systems are made with a several multi-motor setup, and each motor requires separate or independent high complex speed profile. So that puts uh, some challenges on the overall architecture and the way how the system is controlled. In terms of efficiency and EMI compliance, so there is always a trade-off between high efficiency and meeting the EMI performance or requirements. So the fine tuning is the crucial and also put some challenges on fine-tuning of the system. The third one is the accuracy and speed profile. So accuracy of high complex speed profiles become a critical path and the integration allows us to make the system more simple for the programmers. Okay, now you mentioned PCB space reduction earlier. So how does ST Microelectronics help me in this area of my design? We develop the technology which is called a system in package. What does it mean, a system in package? It means that we integrated several silicon dyes in one single package solution. For example, our product called a PowerStep 01 integrates nine silicon dyes. It does integrate a stepper controller and it does also integrate eight low voltage MOSFETs. This solution can reduce up to 67% of PCB board space. And on top of that, it also allows us to improve the efficiency significantly because we used uh, discrete low voltage MOSFETs with RDS on of 16 milliohms per channel. Fantastic. Now, I would also imagine that this solution would streamline the overall architecture of my design as well. Is that true? Correct. Uh, let's see, for example, on the architecture before PowerStep 01. So we have a one system MCU, and then for the free access system, we have one dedicated MCU per X. So then is a MCU stepper driver and then uh, MOSFET. 
So it means very complex system. Now, if we move to the architecture, which is based on uh, power step 01, then we can clearly see there is a significant reduction in terms of uh, components and as a consequently also the area or the space on the PCB. Also, there are some simplification in terms of the overall architecture because the power step 01s are controlled using the high-speed SPI bus. And again, that significantly reduce the amount or the work on the programming side. We reduce the space and also we unified the overall design. This new architecture with high-level commands looks really interesting. Do you see any specific advantages, especially in the medical arena here? Yes. The main advantage of the integration of high-level commands brings some key advantages in the medical field from the approval standpoint of view, because each approval process needs to go through something like uh, risk analysis and the high level commands which are built inside of system in package are purely wired or hardwired based solution. It means the power step when does not contain any firmware or software based solution. And this significantly reduce the challenges with the risk assessment needed for the regulatory approval process. And there are several high-level commands, for example, go to position or run at a constant speed. We can also put or to command going in Y direction or the other direction. And there are also several other commands. But in general, the key point is there is no firmware-based solution as such that helps to reduce or to mitigate the risk required for the regulatory approval. Okay, so you mentioned EMI performance and efficiency earlier. So how can this solution help me here? The EMI performance and efficiency, those are two contradictory requirements. On one side, you would like to have uh, the highest possible efficiency. It means to have a very steep or high transition from high to low and from low to high mode in terms of the PWM signal. But at the same time, this PWM signal creates some EMI profile. And for the regulatory purposes, that EMI pattern must meet certain performance. And as I mentioned at the beginning, there is a trade-off. The faster you go, the more difficult or more polluted uh, pattern we will get. So the trade-off is somewhere in between, meaning, for example, if we need to slow down to the level where you can just hit the EMI profile. At that point, the system is already fine-tuned in terms of best possible efficiency, but at the same time meeting the EMI performance. Fantastic. Now, Let's also talk about voltage mode and current mode. What are the differences between these two modes? The current mode is, I would say, more traditional mode, which we can observe almost on most of the stepper drivers on the market. It's typically based on the traditional peak current mode control. And if we simplify it, it is more like a closed loop uh, system. It's very robust. However, it brings some challenges in terms of the torque ripple and mechanical vibration. So in order to improve specifically, for example, torque ripple and the mechanical vibration, the voltage mode can solve this problem. The voltage mode is, I would say, more like open loop approach. And in certain extent, you can simplify it, if I can simplify it, it is like the low pass filter or it works like a low pass filter. It provides extreme uh, smoothness at all speed and it has also precise positioning. Of course, there are some uh, challenges uh, related to the voltage mode, for example, a mechanical resonance. That's from my point of view, probably the only drawback 
why to use or why to not use the voltage mode. And there are several options how to combat that issue. For example, one of the possible solutions, how to avoid a mechanical resonance, is to put an extra load on the rotor. You also mentioned advanced diagnostics with this solution. So what kind of information can we gather here? The diagnostic pretty much allows you to read uh, some key parameters what's going on on the chip itself. For example, there is a thermal warning, over temperature shutdown, over current protection. There is also stall detection. And in general, we can check the overall status of the entire chip using the software status register. That register provides the feedback, what's going on inside of the chip. Okay, so... What's all included in the STM32 ecosystem? So the STM32 ecosystem is made of three major components. So it is made of hardware support, software support, and supporting tools. Let's start with the hardware support. So for majority of our products, meaning for the motor control, we are offering and specifically does apply also to for the power step one something which is called a nucleo shield board that nucleo shield board is a compatible or the connector is compatible with the arduino r3 connector and that's the first part the second part of the hardware solution is one motherboard based on the stn32 and plug in those two boards together we can create one simple system for one stepper motor. Now, in terms of software, there are examples on our website and there is also expansion software package for STN32 Cube. And the third one is the software tools. For example, currently we are offering two graphical user interface tools, Spin Family Evaluation Tool and then ST Spin Studio. Both tools allows you to simulate or emulate the position control, speed profiling, checking the registers, and develop a very simple system. The spin family evaluation tool offers you also using built-in a Python editor to write a simple script and create and evaluate a system. The PowerStep01 shield board allows you also to put free boards as a stack and create, let's say, free multi-motor system. All right. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. You're welcome. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from ST Microelectronics. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.